Hey everybody, it's Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. I normally do Vespa videos, but I figured I'd cover all the things you need to know about servicing a buddy scooter. So a pretty important thing that you need to do on an air-cooled scooter is check and adjust the valves. Approximately every four or 6,000 miles on these kind of scooters. And these steps all apply to any of the buddy scooters, buddy 125, 150, 170 the hooligan and even the blur. Very simple motors. It's just the steps of taking the plastics off is a little different on a blur or a hooligan, but it's pretty important to check those valves, make the simple adjustment. And I'll tell you one thing, they are easier to do on this scooter compared to any other scooter out there. Um, super simple to get through the body work, really good access. Let's jump right into it and get it done. So first of all, we'll go ahead and pull the mat up get that out of the way you're gonna see three fasteners right here for this little plastic um, little center cover here I already have the underseat bucket out which is four bolts pretty straightforward I pulled that out in a couple videos ago when I did the carburetor and you pull this little last screw the cool thing all these screws are the same so no um, no trickiness to know what screws go in and I'm pushing it from the inside that's kind of the easiest way to pop it out successfully and it pops right out and what do you see you magically see a valve cover that's really easy to access good for PGO for making this thing a very simple scooter you know it do doesn't only benefit like a workshop like mine um, but the do-it-yourselfer wants to keep the scooter going um, you just get longer life out of a scooter if you can keep it maintained inexpensively and um you know it's just like why throw things away when they have plenty of life this thing has plenty of life left in it it probably doesn't even need the valves adjusted it starts right fine you know when it's cold and the first thing i'm doing is actually pulling this little breather hose off and let me get the camera in here i'll show you how that's done so all right so we're on the left side of the engine right here there's a little breather pipe there's a little rubber pipe that goes to the inlet that recirculates the vapors from the crankcase. Just use a little needle nose, slide that out of the way. And then you wanna use something like a screwdriver or even this diagonal plier. We're gonna actually push. You can't really pull hoses off oftentimes because they're like Chinese finger traps. Um, so you push the hose off. There's even special pliers that make that nice and easy. Next, we're gonna get an eight millimeter uh, socket and zip that valve cover off. And keep in mind, this engine is nice and cold. Uh, don't want to do this job with a hot motor. I mean, cold meaning the motor's under 120 degrees. Like you could still do it with a fairly warmed up motor, but you know, that's cooled down for 30 minutes would be ideal. Um, but you're gonna get your best uh, adjustment and you're not gonna be burning your fingertips. All right, so there's four fasteners that hold the valve cover, eight millimeter uh, quarter inch drive is ideal. It's on an extension. And you just kind of go diagonal between all four of the fasteners. And then zip these screws right off. And they're all the same. Nice and easy, no tricks here. Um, if there's a lot of dirt and debris on your valve cover, you may want to clean it. Uh, this one's just got a little bit of uh, just road dust, nothing, nothing to be alarmed about. So get all these screws and FYI, I have it on the center stand. Um, if you take it off the center stand and have the tire, it actually gives you a little bit more clearance. Sometimes that could be helpful. So you might see that it's loose, but it's not gonna come off. You can just give it a couple taps with something plastic. And this is sometimes where it's useful to take the scooter off the center stand. And you may just want to do it temporarily. You can put it on the side stand. So we'll go ahead and take that off the center stand and the valve cover magically pulls right off. So not too, too big of a deal there. Um, get it back up on the stand is another story here with it up on the lip. So back up on the center stand, valve covers off. You see this gasket here? I would suggest replacing it and I'll give you the part number when I put it all back together. So. To remove the gasket, you could just dig a little knife in there. It is possible to reuse it maybe one or two times. They get flat and they start getting leaky. Really inexpensive part. Just be well prepared to you know, set yourself up for success. 
So the first thing, we're gonna get the spark plug out of here. And on the right side of the motor is a spark plug cap, nice and conveniently located. And it pulls off with kind of a bit of force and that's a good thing because the caps do wear out. There's a lot of vibration associated with the, the scooters. You don't replace the whole spark plug wire like you do on a car or something. So if you do need to replace the cap, we do have those available. Is GC1584601000 dash cap. You can get the whole cap wire and coil as well. It's pretty inexpensive if you do need it. Uh, this cap only has about 3,000 miles, so not an issue. Here I have a 5.8 spark plug socket. It's actually on a swivel, makes it a little easier. In the included tool kit with the scooter, it actually does have enough, a small wrench to do that. Let's go and pull that spark plug right out. Spark plugs are inexpensive, usually just replace them. Uh, they definitely last a long time. I mean, you could probably get 8,000 miles out of a spark plug, no problem on these single cylinder engines, especially if it's the original NGK, not really an issue, but you can see it's kind of dark on the end. Um, so we'll just put a brand new one. This is the original plug. It's a C7 HSA. The replacement plug is actually a resistor plug, which is a CR7 HS, uh, works just as well. So. Um, the original ones were non-resistor. They don't really make that plug anymore. It's not as easy to find. So don't worry about it. So next we're gonna set the timing. Super simple to do again on this scooter. So now we'll go ahead and set up the timing. It's super simple on these scooters. So uh, let's zoom right in and you see that? And we're, we have the Kickstarter on the side on these Buddy 125s. With no spark plug in there, it's super simple. So let me just go all the way around. You see the small dot in a line, and then it, um, and towards the front is that large dot. So you see there's a slot in the engine case right here. Let's see if I could point it out right here. See that little seam? That's right back there. It's a little black line. That's a seam between this uh, rocker uh, cap right here and the actual cylinder head. So get those lines parallel with the seams on both the upper and lower. And that's pretty much exactly top dead center on the compression. I'm just giving it little taps with the, the thing. And it's just approximate. Right there is good. And at this point, we can go, ahead, go back and take a look at the valves here. All right, so I lose the audio here. So I'll just do the voiceover. Well, you're gonna need a set of fueler gauges. The best solution is the Scooter West tool valve. You could search for it on the Scooter West web store. They come in three different sizes. You got two to three thousandths, four to five thousandths, and, and also six to eight thousandths. So th that correlates to 0 0.05 to 0 0.08 millimeters, which is the one you're going to need for the Buddy scooter, along with the other sizes that are suitable for other small engines like the Vespas. They use a little bit larger clearance. Another useful tool is going to be the Tool VA-WRE. It's not needed, but it works pretty good on the Buddy scooter. You need the 9 millimeter attachment and a small square. And another option is just use a nine millimeter combination wrench. I mean, that works just as well. If you're just gonna do this job once, probably just use the wrench. Nine millimeter is kind of an odd size. So you wanna locate your three thousandths or 0 0.08 fueler gauge. And I'm just doing a little test and I could see they both slide in real easily, which means the valves are a little bit on the loose side. If that fielder gauge doesn't fit in there, you got tight valves, which is typically what causes running problems. So I go ahead and slide the specific valve adjustment tool with the nine millimeter socket onto the lock nut. And at this point you can turn the little adjuster and you feel, you kinda gotta get a feel for it. Right when it just has a slight bit of resistance, that's when you wanna stop. And then as you slide the fueler gauge through the valve gap, that's the gap between that little tappet that you turn, the adjuster, and the actual top of the valve, it should just have a very slight resistance. And I could tell it was just a little bit on the loose side right there. So give it another shot, just go a little tighter, and you kind of leave the lock nut loose and kind of give it a feel. But oftentimes when you tighten the lock nut, it may make a small adjustment 
to the clearance itself. So it's, it's a little bit of trial and error if you're doing it for the first time. Uh, obviously, if you're a seasoned mechanic, you have a good feel for it. Uh, the guys in my shop do this like every single day. They're probably doing valve adjustments on various different scooters. So they kind of got the feel for it. And the thing with the buddy scooters is both the intake and the exhaust is 3000s or 0 0.08 millimeters about or 0 0.076. If, uh, sometimes you'll find on the kind of fan fold fielder gauges. And another thing you could do I'm just showing how to do it with a nine millimeter wrench is you could try the next thicker feel gauge, which would be about 4,000.10. And if that's a very, very tight fit, um, then you know you need to tighten those valves. If the 0 0.03 doesn't fit in there, then the valve is very tight. So I'm just using a little forcep. That seems to work good because it locks onto the, to the actual adjuster itself. Um, and you can make real minute adjustments with that forcep on there, but a needle nose would do the trick just as well. I'm flipping that feeler gauge over to see how um, the, the point the three thousandths uh, feeler gauge fits between the valves. So, and I kind of like lost it right there. And once you got the position, you can just kind of hold the forcep in place and get your combination wrench back in there and tighten the lock nut. You know, in some situations, using the combination wrench and something to hold the adjuster, you know, in some models like the Vespas, they use a small flat blade screwdriver. That sometimes works better than those specific tools. But in other circumstances, those specialized tools do work a little better, especially if you're doing them all the time. I see my technicians go between using wrenches and the tool VA-WRE that we sell on ScooterWest.com. So you're going to need a valve cover gasket. You can see the part number on the screen, or you can just search the Scooter West web store for valve cover gasket buddy. Um, they're pretty resilient to be reused maybe one or two times if they're not old. Like if we're doing a first service, oftentimes you don't necessarily need to replace it. But if you're doing this to a buddy that's 10 years old, I would definitely set yourself up for success and get a brand new gasket. Uh, the valve cover on the buddy is a pretty uh, well-designed piece of aluminum. It's got little tabs that kind of hold the gasket in place. So you can see I'm just pushing it into the groove and it's all molded to that shape. So it's a very easy gasket to use. In some cases, there's valve cover gaskets that are really difficult to use, but not with the Buddy, pretty easy to use. If you're gonna reuse the gasket, I would certainly put some uh, grease on there. I'd use something like the Maxima waterproof grease. It makes for a good seal and kind of softens up the gasket just ever so slightly if you're going to reuse it. But again, inexpensive part, set yourself up for success. Uh, don't really want to have a leak. Want to make sure the mating surface is pretty clean itself. But you'll notice the valve cover gasket or the valve cover itself is pretty difficult to fit into the buddy while the scooter's up on the center stand. So oftentimes is what I'll do is I'll shift it right off the center stand. I kind of did that all by myself right there. I'm holding the handlebars and popped it off the center stand. Uh, you may want to have somebody help you. You can put it on the side stand or something if you like. And at this point, you can see the head shifted down just ever so slightly. And then it will fit right into the area where that valve cover needs a seat. And make sure you kind of have a good feel for it that the, the valve cover gasket doesn't pop out of place because if you pinch the valve cover gasket, you're going to ruin it and you're going to end up with an oil leak. Go ahead and install the screws. Usually you just finger tight it first, get them all lined up. And you could just get in there with all four screws. And in a crisscross fashion, you could go ahead and tighten those up. You'll need an eight millimeter socket to tighten those screws. And if you're wondering how tight you want to torque those screws, you could torque them to about seven and a half foot pounds. Um, if you're using a quarter inch ratchet, just a little bit of a flick of the wrist. All right, so I'm just going around. And as you can see, you don't necessarily need a torque wrench. I'm just holding that quarter inch ratchet with kind of up on the, the, the one part of it. So I'm getting not a ton of torque on it, but just enough that's appropriate for a six millimeter bolt. Pop the scooter back up in the center stand. You can see it's a pretty difficult job doing it by hand. Of 
course, somebody helping you would uh, be easier than doing it all by yourself. Um, don't forget get to connect that breather hose. They have a hose clamp that you can just squeeze with a set of needle nose uh, pliers and just go right over where that barb is and that holds it in place. And at this point, you're going to need a spark plug. It's a good idea just to replace it. The original part was a C7 HSA. The replacement part is actually a resistor spark plug. So it's an NGK CR7 HSA. It's a short reach plug with a threaded terminal on the top and the tip protrudes. And um, the NGK plugs are kind of the, the best way to go with these small engines. Um, all those other gimmicky plugs, just skip right over them. Just stick with what the factory uses, NGK, NGK all the way. And you can see I'm using a, a socket, a spark plug socket that has, also has a wobble. It's a little bit of a tight quarters right in there. Uh, that makes the job a little bit easier. I think in the Buddy Toolkit, there is a little spark plug socket, a little stamped steel one. It will do the job as well. Of course, hand tighten the spark plug at first and then get in there and torque it. Usually spark plugs, they do have a torque value, but when it's brand new, you could feel that crush washer pretty much kind of distort. So there's kind of some resistance and then all of a sudden it gets to be a lot more resistance and that's when we want to stop. Next, you want to check your spark plug cap. Make sure it's threaded tightly onto that spark plug wire. Yes, the spark plug cap is threaded onto the spark plug wire. If you're not familiar with motorcycle style spark plug caps. Um, another reason to use a new plug sometimes is the vibration actually erodes the terminal that the spark plug cap connects to on the spark plug. So you push it on there, kind of give it a tug make sure it's got some good resistance. Um, obviously there's a feel for that, but a big problem with scooters, there's a lot of vibration and movement with that motor that's a suspension member and the spark plug caps will pop off when they're worn. All right, hope you found that video useful. Um, I would suggest su subscribing to the Vespa Motorsport YouTube channel and just go to Vespa Motorsport on YouTube and we have a whole buddy playlist. So if you have a buddy scooter like this, it's all about different upgrades that you could do to your buddy scooter and everything you need to know about servicing your buddy scooter. Maybe you let it sit too long, need to clean the carburetor, probably got a video up there for it. Until next time, Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com here in San Diego.